coming. Welcome back, guys, and thank you so much for your patience. I know we missed another episode last week, but that's because, as sometimes I have to remind you, I am but one man. There's no team here. When it comes to most of the filming, editing, producing, and uploading, it's pretty much me, myself, and I. And as some of you also know, I've had a lot of new responsibility added to my plate lately. So I'm afraid I have to ask you to do as I sometimes have to do and deal with it. But in last videos, you remember, we went through some pretty rigorous sailing and ended up at one of my favorite places in Panama, Portobello. Favorite? Because I love the history of this particular bay. It goes back five, six centuries into some of the earliest pirate stories that we know. Now for some of you that have been following for a while, you'll remember that the last time Maddie and I were here, I made a video with the help of my oldest son Brendan that introduced the history of Portobello. And I really like that video, so before I get back to today's video, I'm gonna play that portion for you to bring you up to speed. So thanks again for coming out to watch. You know we appreciate it. Welcome to Portobello, Panama, a sleepy little town on the north coast of Panama, about 20 miles northeast of the Caribbean side entrance to the Panama Canal. San Felipe de Portobello, as it was called when it was founded back in 1597, it wasn't always such a sleepy little community, and in fact it endured over 200 years of extreme acts of piracy for being one of the biggest discharge ports of gold and silver in the Spanish main. Geographically speaking, the bay at Portobello was advantageous to the Spanish because they needed a place to transport all the gold from the ships coming up from South America on the Pacific side, and of course at that time the Panama Canal did not exist. So what they did is built a small railway that came the 35 miles from the Pacific side to the Caribbean side and then used the mules to transport the gold over to Portobello. Here it would be stored in this gold reserve until such time as it could be loaded into the galleons and head for Spain. I can't tell you how amazing it is to be anchored in this bay with all these modern cruising boats knowing that just a few hundred years ago it was full of Spanish galleons and pirate ships alike. Back in the 1600s this entire port was open to anyone and everyone to come in and trade. This open trade eventually backfired on the town because the pirates that would attend all the trading would also be paying attention to the vulnerabilities of the town, and as such learned very well the best times and places to lay attack on the city. 1596 and our old buddy Sir Francis Drake comes in and levels the whole place before it's even finished. Well that didn't bode well with the Spanish so they set to work in building all new forts to protect it like a fortress. A lot of good it did them cause next comes Henry Morgan, yes Captain Morgan, and he steams in with 9 ships and a crew of over 400 men. He knew the city so well it literally fell in days and he continued on for more than two weeks burning and torturing everyone in his way, holding the Spanish hostage for ransom and when they awarded it he took to sea with all the gold and anything else of value. Just to further upset the Spanish, while he was there he released a bunch of British prisoners which ended up resulting in him being granted knighthood by King Charles II. It took almost another century of piracy in Portobello before the Spanish figured out they just can't defend it. So instead they came up with a new strategy and built many ports all the way along the west coast. In this way the extra ports could serve as decoys and the pirates would never know which port to attack or when. Sounds like something they might have considered a couple hundred years ago to me. But, well, who am I to say? But anyway, let's go ashore and check this place out. Keep it together Hey girl I never ever 
never thought we'd be I never ever thought I'd see Then I saw your smile Oh, we can go across the ocean to see the world tonight Oh, say hello to the mountains and watch the new sunrise But no matter what the country, the city, the street By land or by sea, together forever is my favorite place to be Yeah, Hi. we are cleaning the windows, getting cleaning everything. Cleaning the windows and waxing poetic over here. Were you telling a life story? Just telling a life story. <laughs> yeah, let's hear it. <laughs> That's going to take a while. I'll have to rehearse it. No, <laughs> just what you just said. What were you talking about? Oh, uh, quitting the day job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I well, went to business. I studied business and marketing, also known as corporate brainwashing 101. <laughs> <laughs> but it was great. It's good to know your enemy, so that was good. Um, but then I decided that was not the route I wanted to take. So more of the entrepreneurial spirit. I started taking care of kids because they're energizing to me, uh -huh. and that was in alignment with my creative pursuits of music and writing and art. Yeah. And uh, I've been doing that ever since. <laughs> Pause. Oh, what's going on? I love the laundry. Okay. We have a lot of laundry after the time. We have laundry. Life stories and laundry today. Yeah. And, and cleaning day. Wax wow, on, wax guys. off. Yeah. Amazing. Major project. I can see outside. Yeah. Yeah, we got a lot of cleanup to do. Your soul. <laughs> we took a lot of salt water on that last trip. It was a yeah. reasonably good sail, but very, very wet ride for sure. Yeah. yeah. Now you see the beautiful panorama here. We can see <laughs> out the windows again. Look at that. <laughs> Almost. This one's still deep. <laughs> no, not too to bad. Do. Yeah, they come up nice, huh? Yeah, yeah. They almost have a shine when they're clean. So the trick is first to take this kind of soap with water, wash it first away, then dry it, then put some extra rain fuel coat. Yeah, we got like a polished coat or something. Polished coat, it and then dry it again, and then uh, this one here. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, perfect. We need to buy uh, more. The link is in the description if you want to buy. Uh... <laughs> it's almost finished. Okay, perfect. So we got just enough, hopefully. Glaze them up a little bit. And. To be continued. <laughs> <laughs> so, what happened? You quit the job. Yeah, I. Um... <clears throat> what made you quit the job? <laughs> um, I didn't want to sell my soul. <sighs> Um, yeah, I wanted to like do, me. yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to do what I wanted to do, creatively, spiritually, and what was things that? that fulfilled my life. Music, writing, art, uh, taking care of kids was good for that. Um, Sounds painful. <laughs> and, we only have one, it's painful. <laughs> <laughs> well, take, I used to get paid to take care of other people's children. Having your own is a whole nother story. <laughs> yeah. So what happened after that? You quit the job and then what? Did you get a different job, or <laughs> how do you support yourself? No, I've been, um, I've done so many other, I've done so many things. I used to nanny, and then I was a swim teacher. I've, I do Reiki and energy work for people. I play music. It's like a, a mixture of things. I've never been laser focused on one thing. So I like mm -hmm. to learn about something. I have a lot of different skill sets, a lot of things that I'm interested in. I've always been able to put them together so I can make ends meet and still have time for my art and my creativity and also learning traveling having new experiences meeting people that's what fills me up surfing also <laughs> and yes we have heard her play and sing and i think you guys are going to be impressed we might have yeah, a I've never, I've never we really got to see if she's going to be in the mood to do a show later or she's something she's a, oh, yeah. a hit and star <laughs> I've, I've never had uh, many complaints <laughs> No, no, no. You have to do what you love. You have to do what you love. How dirty it is. Nice. <laughs> Some fingerprints. <laughs> Woo! Uh huh. No, the show must go on. Definitely very nice music. I was impressed what you did on Instagram too. You did like 90 songs in 90 I days. I did my quarantine project. I yeah. was uh, stuck, oh, yeah. in, stuck in Boca wow. del Toro, Panama during the quarantine. And my mom challenged me to do post one song a day for three months. 
Wow. So it became 90 songs in 90 days. I had an iPhone 11 and a little Sennheiser memory mic Bluetooth that I could clip to my shirt or the guitar strap. Yeah. And it syncs the audio, so it opened up this whole palette of creativity. And we filmed all over Bocas. I filmed, we climbed trees, I filmed out of caves, I filmed on a shipwreck, on off of cliffs, on the beach, everywhere possible. And the variety of the landscape and the songs were either covers or originals. And the whole idea was to showcase Mother Earth as the main character and um, just how music, music can connect everyone. And so that was one of the projects that I did, yeah. And I did check out that project <laughs> and I was very impressed. I only got to watch a few of the videos, but I kept watching because it was like, wow, like, we need to have yeah. this girl on board because we need some yeah. music and that music was stunning. So yeah, I'll put a link if you guys want to check it out to her Instagram page. All of those songs are still there. So you can go back and review it. It all happened during lockdown. And, that was how she passed lockdown. It was quite impressive. And put the like on Harry's And uh, now I'm getting my, I'm a little camera shy right now and I'm getting back into the swing of things. I've been on like a two year hiatus. I've been very you much a hermit. Shy? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. You welcome. Nice to see out the windows again. Wax on, wax off. Happy to see outside the yeah. uh, Oh, I know, it makes a big difference. Again. The plants will get more sun. <laughs> Mom's out doing the laundry. Yeah, and I uh, checked the wind generator then, uh, working amazing. I know, I love that thing. Yeah, look at it. Yeah, if you guys haven't seen it yet, uh, I've been doing my review on this wind generator and it is phenomenal so far. I have to admit, I am super impressed with this product. I didn't think it was going to be possible to find a wind generator we could fit on the boat that, I would, that would actually contribute to our daily energy needs on a boat where we do everything electric. And this thing, yeah, just our first trip here, it put in 4.7 kilowatt hours in 24 hours. <laughs> I was stunned. I didn't think that was even possible. And even yesterday after we got here, we arrived and it was averaging, you know, 15 to 16 knots of wind the whole day. And this thing logged two kilowatt hours into our power curve for that day yesterday. That was also amazing. So that's just that anchor. I was very super impressed with that. So anyway, yeah, I'm sure you're going to be hearing more from me about this nature power product. And it is a very, very phenomenal wind generator for a boat. And it tracks the wind so well. I was wondering how that fishtail was going to work but it actually seems to work really well. I didn't understand how it was gonna, if it weathered out of the wind, how's it gonna push the vane back? But I guess that's what happens is when it does go out of the wind or the wind moves it, it generates lift on that side and actually pushes the tail of the generator back into the wind. That's what it looks like to me anyway, but it does work, I can tell you that, and it works very well. Even at sea, the thing was always tracking straight up wind all the time, so. But Nature Power, yeah, good job. This is a very good product for a sailboat that uses electricity like we do and puts actually something we can use back into the batteries every single day. Well, when, of course, when there's wind, but just like the solar panels, they only work when there's sun. But usually you have sun or wind, not always both. Today, we're lucky we have both, so it's an exceptionally good day. But we're getting good power from that and the solar panels at the same time. So a very good day right here in Portobello. Loving it. And on the outside of the boat, we've got Sandra working on the dinghy. You guys remember, we had an issue with the dinghy last night. It left us kind of, kind of stranded. No, 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 no. What? No battery. Stuck in battery? No, we're getting an error. It's not a battery error. It's just some stupid salt error or something. Oh, yeah, we're not going anywhere. Yeah, we're not going anywhere. The dinghy's having a hissy fit. Hey! Hey! Let's go see how it's going. How are you making it? Well, almost ready Got it. to take it out, yeah. Okay. Oh, Yay. good, good, good. Perfect. All right. Great. Good. Yeah, you guys so. remember we had an issue where it wouldn't start last mm -hmm. night. We couldn't get it to activate. It just kept giving us an error code, error code 6, I think it was, which I looked up, and it says it's some kind of a communication issue between the controller and the motor. So I've already reset the connections between the motor and the wire and the motor and the battery and everything else. We still get the error code, so we figure it's got to be this connection underneath the controller, so that's why we have to remove it, which is just on with a couple of pieces of double-sided tape. And I'll just uh, hopefully reset it, and then we'll test it again. 
So we'll see how that works here in a second. Yeah. Just getting the old glue off. <laughs> it's gonna take a little. Yeah, here's the other wire here that goes into the motor. So that's the one from the controller. I've already reset that and checked the connection. And it's very good. It's clean, no corrosion. Now there is another cable in here, but it goes directly to the head of the motor. And that's the one that comes from the battery system. So I'm not sure if that would be an issue, but of course to get at that one, you have to take the whole motor head apart, which we're not prepared to do at this particular moment. So hopefully we can resolve it with this controller. Now there is our culprit cable right there. So unscrew. Just like so, and pull. Okay. Now. Now it looks very good. There's definitely no corrosion, no signs of water intrusion. All the posts are perfectly clean and sparkling. Let's just try reseating it a couple of times. Just I find if you on and off it a couple of times just to freshen up any connection in case there is any you know invisible corrosion or something we just can't see. This at least just causes friction between the metal components and gives them more surface area to conduct again in case that's the issue. But it doesn't look bad, so I don't know if this is the problem or not, but let's find out. All right, let's turn it on. So we would get this startup screen and this screen and then it would go, oh, no more air. Okay, it's working. <laughs> okay, so if we put That's the key, perfect. let's give it a test. Put the key on and forward. Yay. It's definitely working. <laughs> All right, good news. So hopefully that's the only issue. All right, well, I guess we'll put it back together then. So that's the only thing we can do under here, but at least we know it's not the controller. If it is the controller, I always have a spare one of these also. I can get it out of spare parts, but I don't think we need it. So it's hopefully just a bad connection. All right, so we're just gonna put another strip of tape back down here, another piece here, and then put it back into position. But yeah, you can see we got a little bit of dirt accumulated here over time. So we'll clean all that up first before we stick it back down. <laughs> he looks good on camera. So I wonder how many of you have ever heard the legend of the Cristo Negro or Black Christ. This is another piece of history right here in Portobello with its roots embedded deep in the 17th century. Cristo Negro was a wooden statue originally carved in Spain that was sent on a ship from Colombia to be displayed in the New World. The legend has it the ship from Colombia got detained in Portobello due to a storm. This happened repeatedly. Every time they tried to leave the dock, a storm would move in and the ship was stuck. The crew, being very superstitious, believed the problem was the Cristo Negro and they took the statue and dumped it in the ocean. The next day the weather cleared and the ship sailed off. A a fisherman found the statue and brought it to shore, where it was originally put on display in a small church. After Iglesia de San Felipe was built, the statue was installed here, where it has remained ever since. Cristo Negro has developed such a huge religious following that every year there is a pilgrimage from all parts of Panama, some walking over 60 miles but all walking the last mile on their hands and knees seeking blessings at the shrine. This is our new friend Art. Yeah, tell us. We just met Art. He's down here buying a boat. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm buying a before 500 that's at uh, Linton Bay Marina. It's my dream boat. I'm going to stay uh, 
here in Panama for a couple of months and then sail for Florida and uh, eventually to my home in Fort Washington, New York. Amazing. Spend, nice. Spend, nice trip. Spend six months a year there and uh, six months. On the boat doing whatever. No, I'm going south. Mm -hmm. So you've been following. No cold water. You've been following sophistic, sophisticated lady for how long? You said seven or eight years. Amazing. I'm not sure how many. <laughs> and a uh, source of inspiration to me to uh, pursue this dream. Amazing. Oh, that's excellent. Well, very nice to meet you, sir. Thanks Have for saying day. hi. Yeah, we'll see you around. Anyway, we'll see, see you over Linda Bay. We're going to be over there in the next couple of days. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, are you just visiting there, or are you staying on the boat once you buy it? Uh, I have to go home today. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, but I'll Not be back. cold weather. Gosh, it's 20 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> and high winds and gale warnings for tonight. Oh, no. Yeah. Best to stay here. It would be, but I've overstayed five or six days because I, I really like to get the keys while I'm here and put a toothbrush on. <laughs> But it, I hear you. everything's slowing up. It's Christmas week. You know. uh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's all Panama these people too. that are usually <laughs> in a huge rush to get your money or whatever. I can't get the insurance company to take the payment and send a binder. Oh, really? And other little details. <laughs> oh, it's Christmas week. You know, people are that we're going to parties and things. Oh uh, yeah, Don't you yeah, want yeah. my money? Well, I hope it works out. You get it all looked after. <laughs> Good to see you, sir. Safe travels. You as well. <laughs> Documenting. Documenting Portobello town. Ricardo is looking for Lucky. It's amazing to see this tiny little town in its present form. So quiet, so peaceful, so still. In such a stark contrast to what it was just a few centuries ago. Imagine being here back then when a normal day was guns blazing and the thunder of cannons everywhere, ships sinking, people screaming and running for their lives. As the settlement embraces its most recent cultures, the biggest sounds you hear now are music. And of course, that was music to Adrian's ears because she was more than curious to learn something about the local culture and its music.
Richie. Con la familia. Ciao ragazzi. Ciao ciao. Just imagine what it must have been like to live here three, four hundred years ago with all these cannons in your backyard, knowing that they're here not for if somebody comes for you, but when they come for you. That must have been a difficult thing to live with every day, just knowing that at some point they were gonna start to fire, and at the other end of them, somebody's firing back. And as if that wasn't unnerving enough, you've got a big flock of vultures that still live here just as a constant reminder that, hey, yeah, we know somebody's gonna die.